Hello, I'm Lauren Green, and welcome to Bias Bash. Last night, the third and final presidential debate took place in Las Vegas, where Democratic presidential nominee Hillary Clinton and Republican presidential nominee Donald Trump had their last chance to show America why they should be in the White House. The nominees took verbal jabs at each other, but the media is now taking hits at Trump after he directly targeted them. Let's listen. First of all, the media is so dishonest and so corrupt, and the pile-on is so amazing. The New York Times actually wrote an article about it that they don't even care. It's so dishonest, and they poison the minds of the voters. But unfortunately for them, I think the voters are through it. She should not be allowed to run. And just in that respect, I say it's rigged. Well, joining me now with a reaction is senior Washington correspondent uh, for Talk Media News, Justin Duckham. Welcome, Justin. I've got to say, you know, uh, the media is also focusing on Trump's statement where he you know, alluded that he might not concede if he loses the election in no November. I mean, your, your thoughts about that, but also these thoughts that, you know, he thinks it's all rigged if he doesn't win. Well, as a member of the dishonest media, I'm very <laughs> happy to be uh, rigging my first election. This is really a great joy for me. Uh, no, but really, I mean, this is uncharted territory for a lot of reporters right now myself included, and if anything, I think there's sort of a tendency to maybe perhaps give his campaign a little bit too much credence. Uh, despite the fact that a lot of the coverage has been negative, people are still taking what he says seriously, even though he is running an increasingly unserious campaign. Right now, it really looks like more of a scorched earth campaign where he's going after the establishment, whoever it may be, going after Donna Brazil, going after the media, going after his own party, and not really, um, you know, making a case for why he should be president, but just, just trying to burn some bridges on his way out. So I think that the media probably should not have been surprised by the rhetoric that we heard last mm -hmm. night. Um, and uh, it's kind of hard to understand how exactly you should portray this, considering the context that it's taking, in and taking place in is just so, so bizarre. You know, you, 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 you were saying that Trump um, is running a sort of symbolic campaign. I've heard you mm -hmm. say that. Well, what, how do you mean by symbolic campaign? And do you think uh, Trump really actually knows that? I mean, I think right now he's just trying to settle some scores. If he was actually trying to turn his campaign around, there are steps that you could actually take as a candidate to at least stop the bleeding. But that's not what we're seeing from him. We aren't seeing any contrition when it comes to uh, the scandal with the accusers or him uh, perhaps mellowing his language on that. And we see him really just kind of lashing out at people on the way out and really just trying to, I guess, settle some scores. He still has a pretty big chip on his shoulder, this idea that he was never taken seriously despite the fact that he got the Republican nomination and is still covered as a relatively serious candidate. Uh, and at this point is really just trying to, I guess, you know, give a middle finger or something like that as the uh, hmm. as the selection winds down. You know, author uh, Herbert Schlossberg, um, who wrote an a, a interesting book, you know, years ago about I, 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 idols and the, the destruction of humanity kind of thing, and he said politics is downstream from culture. And so the, the idea is that if you don't like our, the, our politicians that we put in power, it's more a reflection on uh, the, the, the culture, the society that put them in office. I mean, has the media contributed to the rise of Donald Trump? I mean, I think the media certainly has contributed to the rise to a large extent. Uh, you know, we obviously have a 24-hour news cycle. We have the Internet, which is very click-heavy. And as a result, you know, Donald Trump was just kind of catnip for what we were, you know, looking for and what was going to have to be covered. Uh, so I think, you know, for the amount of attention that he received, there's probably no real way to avoid that. Uh, but I think it probably took a little bit too late for... Um, you know, people to kind of realize that this perhaps wasn't healthy. I think it's probably a good case study. We are obviously still kind of grappling with, uh, you know, new technology and how we cover the news in this age where, uh, you know, things are kind of uncertain. And I think that this may have been a, a pretty interesting case study down the road. Mm -hmm. Very interesting because Trump, even yeah. today, even after certain people, even uh, pundits are saying, you know, it's a lost cause. You know, Trump, you know, he's finished. He's saying, you know, he's going to win. I mean, is this something that the, the media takes seriously, or is it just not a part of the whole um, scorched earth campaign? I mean, it's really hard. It's, it's hard to publicly come out and just say that, look, this isn't a real campaign. You guys can probably stop watching and just pack it in, um, since, you know, we're still not really sure where exactly Donald Trump's intentions are, so that would be unfair to do for him. So as a result, you now just kind of have to take everything he says at face value, even though it's becoming more and more difficult to really do so. You can't hear a phrase like that. You can't hear him coming out and claiming that he won the debate based on every poll and not realize that um, you know, there delusional? really is no basis in reality. <laughs> yeah, I mean, it's, it's either dealing with somebody who's delusional or um, you know, dealing with somebody who 
is just kind of flippantly treating this campaign as kind of a joke towards the end. And both of those are, uh, you know, pretty, uh, pretty uncomfortable circumstances. Yeah. All right. I want to thank you so much, Justin. Thank you. And if you want to hear more media analysis on this week's top headlines, catch Media Buzz with Howard Kurtz, Sundays at 11 a.m. Eastern, and again at 5 p.m. Eastern on the Fox News Channel. I'm Lauren Green, and thanks for watching.